Welcome back to Northwich Makerspace. This is update 10 and we have made some massive progress. This is probably our biggest update yet because we have spent the last two weeks here, night and day, getting it finished for our open day that was just gone this weekend. We had all of our founding members down here. There's about 30 people came to view the space, have a look around and see what they backed on Crowdfunder. So a big thank you to everyone who came down here. As you can see, it's absolutely transformed. We've got the woodworking shop, metalworking shops all set up. We've got all the equipment in. It's all looking clean and polished and nice and bright as well. All of these lights only just went in in the last few days. So it's lovely and bright. But let's not start here. I want to show you the whole space because everywhere is transformed. But let's start at the beginning and we'll go and have a look at the front. So starting at the front of the building, we've got our signage up. This was really last minute too. These signs arrived just within the last couple of days. We were able to get the sign up on the front. And we've got a little bit of a throwback to the predecessor of this unit because we kind of like recycled their sign. We've kept an element of it. We've also got a big billboard sign up as well, which is looking really, really clean. All of the frontage is all looking nice and clean too. And we've also got a sign added in for our car park, which is across the road. So we've got loads of parking down here. I think we've got about 15 to 20 car parking spaces and we've got CCTV on the front. We've got one camera looking across all of the cars out the front and anyone who's coming and going. And we've got a camera on the car park too. So wherever you parked, you're safe, your vehicles are secure. So that's really important to us. Heading inside, this is our main entryway and we've got our access system in place now. So essentially these doors are on mag locks and you can only get through them if you've got a fob and the fobs are only issued to our members. And this is just to protect us from members of the public kind of wandering in, not knowing where they're going and then ending up walking around, walking around the machines, equipment, we don't want that. So members of the public can, are welcome to come inside, but the only way that they can go is up into our reception area. So once you're in the reception area, it's all nice and clean and tidy. We've got our aeroplane seat, which is one of my favorite little additions to the space. Maker space blue, looking nice and tidy. We've got our reception desk, which was also something we picked up quite early on and it's now clean and fitted and it looks really nice there. To get any further though, you need a fob. You can't go anywhere past this point. So it's all lovely in here, but we have got our little brew station in the reception and we've got a toilet in the reception too. So that's basically the area that the public can get to and it's a nice reception area that kind of maintains the security of the space but feeling open for anyone who wants to visit. And we've got a window looking down into what's happening. We've also got the door over to the business incubator studios. So we'll head over there, head over my favorite bridge, the best bit of the building. The three business incubators are here. We've got a couple of them taken out already but we still have one available. So again, these are lovely workshops. We can put a ceiling in it or we can leave it with We've currently left it without a ceiling, so we've got natural light in here, depending who wants to use the space. If you're an artist, you might want natural light, or maybe you're not and you want the ceiling, so you can have a bit of warmth in here. So this is open, this one's available. The details are on the website, northwitchmakerspace.co.uk. Right, so that's the business incubators. Through here is the shared office. And in here, you can see it's all finished off, all looking really clean and fresh. We've got 12 desks. I think I've said this before, this is definitely an area that we have showed you but it's all clean now. We've got 12 desks. All of them are 1.3 meters wide. They're nice, solid oak desks. I love them, they're really comfortable. They've all come with these nice ergonomic kind of lumbar support chairs, which are also like adjustable in three different ways. They've all got a set of drawers, pedestal drawers, three drawers, lockable. They've got sockets on the top, sockets underneath, and they've all got connection to the network as well. So you, you've got super fast Wi-Fi here but you can also connect up your computer with a network cable. So you've got reliable internet. Through here, we've got another four. So we've got 12 in total desks. And then through here, we've got the good stuff. The stuff that is also, I don't think we've even hardly shown you any of this because it's been so quick in the making. This is the 3D print lab. In here, we have seven 3D printers. Pretty exciting. We only got them this week, last week on Thursday, it was pretty close call, getting these pretty close cut, but we've got three Zortrax M200 printers. Now these print, AB, well they print anything, but we're gonna be using them to print ABS. Because ABS, it's a, it's a stronger plastic, but it needs a heated enclosure to be able to print effectively. So I'm under great advice from various experts that I've been in touch with, people who have been founding members that I've been speaking to. I kind of was sending them links to these and, and trying to, basically set up the right printers for the space to make it um, as accessible to everyone. So we've got a mixture of super simple printers. This is a Robo 
R2 printer. Now this came from a school and they're used in schools because they're, they're so simple to use. So if you've never done 3D printing, you wanna get started. Even I, I mean, I've done nothing with 3D printing and even I've managed to get this going. We just loaded it up, clicked print and we got this little boat out, which looks fantastic. And that's made out of PLA. So we've got super simple printers for the uninitiated. Then we've got Zortrax printers that'll do ABS if you really want some strong parts. And then behind Matt, the cameraman, we've got three Lulzbot printers, which are super high quality, really highly rated machines. We've got two Taz 6s, which have got 300 by 300 millimeter print beds. And then we've got a Taz Mini as well. So hopefully that's enough printers to make sure that if you come down the maker space, you'll be able to print what you want to print without waiting too long. We've also got heaps of filament. Now the filament here is all, you can use any of it basically. You can use whatever you want. Obviously some of these are 1.75 mil print heads. Some of them are three. We've also got different print heads for different machines. So whatever filament you want to choose, whatever color, we've only got ABS and PLA and it's ABS for these, PLA for over there. And then you'll just be paying for the weight of the print. And that's just so we can kind of make sure we don't run out of filament. We can just kind of have it as a never ending supply. So you'll just pay a little bit for it. You'll weigh the print, it'll probably be 50p, not much really. I mean, it's like something like 20 pound a kilogram. So most prints weigh grams. <laughs> so you're probably gonna be paying 20 pence, but at least then it goes back into the kitty and we can keep this filament pile fully stocked with stuff. But I think this is a pretty good start and we've got loads of parts too. Now in here, as well as we've got, they're not set up yet, but we've got four um, Dell Optiplex i7 PCs. These are all set up with the full office suite. They're set up with um, software for the 3D printers as well. They're set up with everything you need. So you can come in here and you can sit on a computer and start from scratch pretty much. You can bring an SD card in with your own designs if you want to, but even if you've never done it before, you can sit in here on a computer with a great view all the way down the maker space and start designing your 3D prints and learning about it. And hopefully we'll have some courses, but that'll be coming a little bit later. But let's have a look into the next room. So following on from the 3D print room, we've got a lovely walk down this open plan kind of balcony. And out here in this open area, we've got our CNC laser printer. So this is the big one. This was in our crowdfunder video and it's a 1.2 meter by 900 millimeter bed. It's a fantastic machine. It's a 100 watt CO2 laser. It's not seen much use, so it's like new and it's one of the big bits of kit in the area. We've also got two smaller CNC lasers, which are gonna be going down the side here. So that'll give us three in the space, the big one and then two smaller ones. So hopefully as well, if you've got any little projects, you don't have to tie up the big machine. And this space has really come together nicely too. It's nice and open plan, well lit, and leading on to the craft room. So the craft room, again, massive shock hopefully to you if you're watching the video. We've not shown you any of this because it all came together in that final week. And you can see the centerpiece is this massive table. This came from a fashion designer in Tarpley. I picked this table up and they were using it for cutting out patterns, pattern making, and it's exactly what we wanted it for. A huge, big standing height desk that you can do pattern cutting or sign making or any other clean crafts in here. We've got loads of materials underneath. We've got heaps of vinyl for the vinyl plotter. We've got loads of foam, some fabric, but obviously we're always accepting any other craft supplies that you want to send down. Over here, we've got the Jack Industrial Sewing Machine and the Jack Overlocker, looking really great. They fitted in the room exactly as I'd hoped with the floor plan. On the back wall, we've got drawers, which are all full of stuff. So this set of drawers here is just filled with stamps. So if, you wanted to, if you're into your card making or crafts, you know, kind of like paper crafts, I think we've probably got about 100 different stamps that I've been collecting from different car boots and different job lots. We've also got some other craft supplies. We've got hot glue guns and all that kind of jazz. These drawers are fully stocked. This is the cold laminator. So this goes with the vinyl plotter. If you're cutting something out and want to make a sign, you can run it through the laminator and that gets all those bubbles out. So you can do a professional job of kind of vinyl plotting. And then last but no means least, well actually second to last, we've got the heat press and then we've got the large format printer. I don't think this is staying in here actually, because we have actually built a second room, which is here, which is also quite a big room. There's nothing in it at the moment, but the plan is for this to be a print room to try and get some of the printers out of there. Cause it's just quite big, isn't it? That printer, it's taken up a big area and I think we're gonna need more storage in there. So the plan is to set this up as a print room, but that may change, but it's all finished, all carpeted, all powered up, light sockets, looking fantastic. So that's everything up here. Let's show you downstairs. So downstairs, this is the, probably the most exciting part of the space. Well, for me anyway, 
because it's been the last part that we finished. Let's start in the corner of the woodworking shop with this radial arm saw. So this is what we were building last week. It took a bit of time to get it all properly set up. But what we've got here is a long workbench with a fixed datum point at the back, which we can square everything off. So we've got our radial arm saw. Now this comes out 500 mil. Let's loosen this up. So this comes out 500 mil to do 500 mil cuts, but it also does cross cuts and rip cuts and stuff like that. So this is a really versatile machine. It can do mitres, it can do angles, and that's all plumbed in square off this edge, which flows on to our standard mitre saw, which is also in line with it. So this is if you're doing loads of little cuts and loads of trim and smaller stuff, and you just want to be repeatably doing them, you can obviously set up a block point off this back edge and you can just whiz through those. And then down here, we've got a nice separate section of the workshop where we can put some other desk mounted machinery. Like I say, these machines aren't bolted down yet, so they might move, but we've got a small band saw, we've got a scroll saw, a small lathe for practicing on before you get onto the big lathe, which I'll show you in a minute. A little oscillating uh, bobbin sander. And essentially, we want this space to work for our members. You know, it is a community space, and I wanted to make sure that we had all of the building work done. We've got some of the main key elements in, we've got the space built, we've done all the building work, all the messy work. And when you guys start coming down here, doing your inductions and start using the space, I'll be here too and you can talk to me and we can kind of discuss where things can be moved to or if there's anything missing. If you start realizing quite quickly that we don't have a certain thing, then you know, let me know and we'll get one in the space. So that's why lots of things are just loose sat on the surface. But down this end, we've got our floor standing equipment. You can see this datum point here runs in line with our mortiser. So if you're doing long lengths, you can also mortise them, which also runs true to the spindle molder, which is here. So we've got a nice straight run all the way down. Into the corner, we've got a floor standing pillar drill. Now this one is actually gonna be the metal working floor standing pillar drill. So that's gonna be going in the metal area. We've actually got a record power one, which is going here. I've, you can see we've got a lot of record power. I kinda of like everything matching, so we're gonna be putting a record power floor standing drill here. We've also got the record power band saw. This is on wheels. Not really locked down where this is going yet, but it's here. It's a quality one. It's not their basic range. It's their premium 14 inch bandsaw it runs really nicely it's dead smooth and quiet and that's obviously going to be somewhere around this area and then over here we've got one of the highlights for me this is a cast iron solid union graduate wood turning lathe with all of the trucks and face plates but obviously if this is a bit overwhelming for you you want to try wood turning but maybe not on this big old beastie thing you can use the small record power one turn a pen on there or something get used to it you can see here we've got a big open plan area with loads of benches. All have got vices either side, so you can make the parts you want to do, chop them up, and then come over here and put them all together. We've got loads of tools as well. Behind me, we've got the metalworking bays. Now these aren't quite finished yet because we're going to be having strip curtain in both these bays, and that's to keep the dust down. This one in particular is going to have welding grade strip curtain because this is the welding bay. So we've got two metal benches in here. We're going to have arc welding and MIG welding to start with. We look, could look at other types of welding if there's a requirement. Oh, and spot welding, we also have a spot welder. We've got welding aprons, we've got welding hoods, gloves, welding helmets, welding strip curtain, and it's a nice safe space to go and work. And then the other side, it's more of the engineering metal work. So it's hydraulic press, a little band saw, we've got metal cutoff saw, some of the other metal working stuff that isn't welding or abrasives. Over here, we've got our lathe. Now we've got, this one's 400 centers, so it can do a fair amount of stuff. It's also variable speed, and it's a really solid German-made machine. And so far, I think it's a really great start, and hopefully we can see what our members require, see if we need a bigger lathe, or if we need some other metal working tools, but we wanted to start off with something. So we've got this one here. It's in its own little section with it on its own tool cabinet, which has not just got uh, lathe tools in, it's got some other tools too, but it's got its own little guard as well, so hopefully, that's a nice spot for that to live. And that wraps it up for the metal working and the woodworking, but we've also got a great little area around here, which is a quite a versatile space. We can change this area up and we can take ideas again for what to do in here. Right now we've got an electrical bench and we've got some electrical items to go with it. And we know that electrical and electrical area is quite key. So that is gonna be in here. We can build it out a little bit more, but it's gonna be in this section. But what we've got is some of our tools that we don't think are gonna be used as much. We wanna put them on these wheeling benches. So vacuum forming, vacuum trimming. 
we've got the foam molding cutting machine we've got another bench which we can put items and tools on as well and that way we can kind of use this as an adaptable versatile space we've also got our shot blasting or sand blasting machine over here too if you've got something all rusty and knackered and you put it in a sand blasting machine it doesn't take long to get it looking like new again so we definitely wanted one of these in the space and hopefully we see a few good restorations in here with that so that wraps up for this end We've got the craft saw there, but we showed you that before. That's not going to be open for a while because we need to set that up. That's its own project, getting that sorted. But we can show you the kitchen and social area, which is, I think we've shown you in here a few times before too, but now it's all clean and it's all finished. And I'll tell you what I haven't shown you before, that it's connected with its own aerial and it has full digital TV. So you can come down here and if you're getting a bit tired of making something, or you just want to watch the news, or maybe you want to watch the chase. The TV's all plumbed in, so you can sit in here, eat your tea, or eat your lunch and watch some TV. So that's all sorted. I'll turn it off. We've also got the kitchen fully cleaned and ready. That took a little bit of doing. There was a fair bit of dust and mess in here, but it's all sorted. We've got 72 mugs in total, and we think that's probably going to be enough mugs for all of the members. <laughs> To make a brew and if that's not enough we've obviously got a dishwasher too so we can get the dishwasher running keep on top of the mugs loads of cupboards microwave all of that's open for use for all of the uh, the members and the bookshelf is starting to fill up so i think you've seen me mention this a few times but i've managed to pick up some amazing books here i got a job lot from a carpenter of woodworking books and there's some fascinating books here and then we've got a whole shelf here full of needle craft sewing rug making over here is all art books and kind of like artists' inspiration books. Hopefully we can fill that up a little bit more. And I don't think I'd mind having some board games in there too. As you can see out here, it's super open plan. Hopefully Matt gets a few wide shots of how open and spacious the space feels. We wanted it open plan, we wanted it spacious, and I think we've achieved that. It's all nice and tidy, even this kind of like messy wet area with the, with the big double stainless steel sink and the cupboard for displaying things that people have made. It's all finished and I'm loving the vending machine. This actually works now, although I've got no money to put in it, but it all works and we've got all your favorite drinks in there. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the space and how big it is. A lot of the people who came down here on Saturday were pretty surprised by the scale of the place. And they said they couldn't really tell how big it was and kind of the proper layout of it from the video. So hopefully that gives you more of an idea. Hopefully you made it down on Saturday if you're one of our founding members. If you didn't, send us a message. We'd love to get you down here. Inductions start next week. So if you've got a founding membership, go on the website, make sure you complete your membership login on there. Uh, you should have had an email about it and then you can set yourself up with your membership and you can arrange your induction. And once you've been inducted, you can come and go as you please. You can start using the space and making things. So a big thank you to everyone who supported this project. And, and I'm, I'm absolutely blown away myself by the support we've had. And I'm also pretty amazed by what we've actually been able to achieve in three months. It's kind of been a bit of a haze for me, a bit of a, a crazy three months. And to see where we've come to now, building this whole place from scratch, kitting it all out. But not only that, setting up the website, doing all the technical side of it, also doing the, uh, the videos and the social media, which is not my biggest forte, but obviously we've got to do it. And I think the fact we've tracked the whole journey, and if you've not seen all these videos, go back on this channel. We've got 10 update videos tracking this build from day one where we got the keys and it was an empty unit. And it's actually quite nostalgic, even though it's only been three months to go back and have a look at that first episode and how empty and kind of messy this place was to how it is now, the finished article, all polished, tidy and organized and working, you know, when we're ready, ready to open up. And I'm now excited to see what people are going to come down here and make, invent, create, and then hopefully we can start sharing those projects on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel with the bell icon because we've got more videos coming and hopefully we can start showing you what we can use the space for. Also follow along with the Instagram because we've got loads of pictures and content on there too. And the Twitter, all of those good things, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. But the big one is northwichmakerspace.co.uk because on there you'll be able to engage with other members. You're gonna be able to see 
who the experts are in the different areas that maybe you've got an interest in. If you want to learn about 3D printing, about the CNC laser, you're going to be able to find members of this community that you can talk to, work with and learn from. And that's what this space is all about. So I'd love to hear your ideas. Make sure you've taken out your membership. If you've not come down to see the space and you're a founding member, get on the website and organize your induction and make sure you can start utilizing that membership. So once again, a big thank you to all of the backers and the supporters on the crowdfunder. Huge thank you to everyone who came down on Saturday and I can't wait to see you all down here. Mm -hmm.